Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass here, and welcome back to Y2K. Previously, we went sewer surfing, and things started to make no sense. Reluctant Apology Tour. Oh great, we're getting the band back together. Instead of there being good music at the end. Okay. It's just a bad mix. Maybe I blew up at Rory. Maybe he didn't deserve that abuse. I'll admit that much. I was scared. So many odd things were happening around me, and I didn't handle it very well. First I met Sammy, then I lost Sammy. Then I met Rory, who had lost Carrie. For a moment, I considered saying that we were alike, but I often have to remind myself that I didn't really know Sammy. We met only once, but still, I can't get her off my mind. Okay, so what's troubling you, Alex? How could you tell something's troubling me? You're making your I'm thinking face. Dang it, Bill Cipher is more like emotive than us. What a world does this come to? Mainly I'm thinking about what Vela said. About detaching your soul from your body or whatever. She seems convinced that Sammy had done that. But somehow that just feels wrong. Sammy was taken by something. She struggled and then she tried to fight them off. It doesn't seem like she willed her mind to separate from her body. I don't know, it's just... Ever since then, I've just had this terrible dark gloom following me. No matter what I do, I can't shake this feeling. I just feel like all my focus has been on the wrong thing all this time. I feel like Michael's excitement over finding the sole survivors made me forget about finding Sammy. That pisses me off. We should be out there looking for her. Where do you think you'd look for her? Do you really even know anything about her? No. <sighs> I don't know, maybe I'll... We'll resume this conversation later. So the mom's a natural character? God, what if she wants a party member? It's gonna be awkward. Oh yeah, yeah, you are an actual person, huh? Weird. First I gotta go with my computer. Now I'm a modern, that's modern teenager. Oh my god. Oh, there's actually, I actually kind of like this. This is pretty cool. I don't, I don't really want to like go like, fully go through with it for the sake of brevity. Um. Well, I'm just gonna kind of go for these. I think there's actually side quests going by the achievements in this. This is a pretty accurate Aaron <laughs> simulator, actually. It would have been nice if it was more of that kind of like this intricate with it. What's up? You look different. Did you get taller? No, I got meaner. Always getting Ooh, taller. When I'm angry. <laughs> I get insufferable. I, I don't know, Mom. How was work? Well, you think I was the Hulk or something? No. Terrible. I've slept at the office for the past few weeks. I smell, I need a shower, and I don't even work in fast food anymore. How's the project coming? Everything done? Yeah. It's done. Alex, would you mind sitting down for a bit? I need to talk to you about something serious. What's wrong? Alex, it's... Well, basically... They let everyone go at work. I'm gonna be so rich now, rich boy! They fired everyone in my department. So, looks like I'm out of work for a while. Looks like I'm gonna have to get a job! <laughs> Holy crap, can they do that? Hope your liberal arts degree comes in to help. Weren't you, like, the project lead? How can they fire you when you're the boss? Well, everyone has a boss, Alex. But it's going to be okay. Just things are going to be tight for a while. But don't we have savings? Like, you have money, right? That was used for your education, you dum-dum. Yeah, I have a bit. I spent most of it on your last semester. 
But I had a college fund. It's been used. That should have been separate from your unemployment fund. Well, Alex, it was. But I had budgeted for you and your sister to spend only four years at college. You graduated in five and a quarter. That money had to come from somewhere. Youch. So what do we do? Well, Mr. Bachelor's degree, how about you get a job? Youch. I paid a lot of money for that fancy degree of yours. It's not even postmodern in RPG anymore. This is just real life. Doesn't have to be today. But by the end of the week, you should at least have some interviews lined up. Okay, you can go. It's like man child simulator. <laughs> I should say that. It's true. Hello, inner thoughts. I now realize I'm a late 90s loser. <laughs> What do I do? Alex? You should invest in Bitcoin. Back. Our mom works really hard. We come for hard. the future. It's not her fault you need to get a job. You knew this would come eventually. Come on, don't you want to work for yourself? Put that degree of yours to use? What's our degree? Mom did everything for us. And now we can't repay her this way. Just be nice. Play it cool. Go punch a wall or throw the panda or something. Don't let her actually see how you're acting. Inner thoughts. Intelligent and reasonable. Outer me. Oh, yeah, this way. We didn't do this Incapable before. Incapable of it listening to inner us. thoughts. Why did you start acting this way, man? If this was like not a game of like video game references and was a little bit serious, this could actually be a good character study. You love your mom and you're grateful for everything she's done. Why can't you just do a better job of showing her that? Maybe the game should have went for a more grimmer atmosphere. So it would have had like some thematic consistency and then we would have like hated Alex, but yes. we would have felt bad for him because he's like, like a being realistic a guy. A-hole? Don't. Sounds pretty simple to me. Just don't be mean. So instead of like the postmodern RPG, this should have been transformed into the Lost Generation RPG. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to not be a jerk, but I just want to know why you've changed. Have you changed though? Yeah. Yeah, you've totally changed. But, can you change back? What will real world Alex do now? Oh, I actually can literally get a job. Maybe part of it, maybe part of it they did actually think of like making the Lost Generation RPG. Um, and some of it got kind of muddled and transitioned with some of the other ideas they had. Because the core idea of this game, if I, if I remember correctly from what the developers said, was it was based off the elevator girl that that urban not urban legend it's an urban legend in the sense it's a real event but there's a lot of conspiratorial paranormal things around it so it's, it's kind of transcended to a weird urban legend area so that, that was the core idea and then everything else kind of came from around that so i'm saying like i'm wondering if the direction probably needed to be focused down a little more. I need a job. Dang. In her defense, I was a dick. Well, that's enough job playing for one day. I should go home and get some sleep. Dang, we suck. Well, we walked around the town for about 10 minutes. No jobs. Cryptic metaphor? Hey, Alex. Call me it's Deep Throat. No, no, I already said I, there was no time for that. Oh, uh, okay, look, you know, I gotta go. Say hi to your sister for me. I couldn't deal with this.
I was going to unplug this phone. I winced every time the stupid thing rang. Go to sleep, go to sleep. There's those weird dreams again. I'm vaguely interested in the android girl, and I'm waiting for them to become a party member. No, no, our dream for us on Indie Game. this recurring dream. It was a weird dream. The sort of dream that shouldn't be scary because the imagery is actually pretty tame. But still, no matter what I did, I just couldn't shake the feeling the dream gave me the next morning. There's this woman. She's a woman made of plastic and we're watching her. Yes, we are, you and I. We observe her motionless form and discuss the state of her condition. We're not doctors in the dream. We have no intention of helping her. But at the same time, I don't think we want to hurt her. There's a third person there. But she doesn't speak. In fact, we never see her face. I think she's judging us. In a way, you and I are trying to impress her. You speak more than I do, and for some reason you're a woman. But I guess that isn't so strange now, is it? Wait a minute, were you... Were you dressing me, or were you dressing like an off-screen character? Something's weird going on. Oh, hi. What's going on? What's on the TV? Anything interesting? Twilight Zone Marathon? I love that. Nothing to see here. Nothing but static. I had a dream like this once. Or was it a dream? Okay. I'm going to say it. I don't know if you've noticed. I certainly did. In fact, I've been trying to ignore it all along. You see, there was a figure in my house. It followed me around. It was lurking in the corner of my eyes at all times. Was this why my mood had been so strange? Why I felt so weird since I last saw everyone? No, I don't think that was it. Something told me the figure wasn't bad. It had been here a while. Haven't you noticed it? It had been here since I returned home from college. Maybe even before. Yes, technically. I think I needed to speak with it. It was materialized. It was no longer transparent. Was it an entity? Why the hell was it living in my house? Get out! I don't want you here! Do you understand what I'm saying? Leave! Be gone! Ugh, wish Vela had taught me banish. So what's up? I'm gonna try what talking, right? What the hell right? are you doing here? This isn't even a real TV show! Do you even speak English? Strong silent type, I see. Okay. What to do, what to do. What if we turn off the, uh, TV? Do we just leave? Should we? I don't know. Is it, is it afraid of cookies? Walk away. Whoa, hey, hey. Hello. <laughs> That's not weird. Do you like video games? What about video games? Are we we jamming? What music? Uh, now let's just hang out over here. What do I do with you? No, go out the back door. Okay. You want me to follow you into the dark forest? 
through these inconspicuous rocks that I'll have to blow up. It's a small thing, but I don't think these rocks should be here, and I'll tell you why. Because you're not going to get to this point in the game without having this. We've already like been established we get this. And it's a linear route, so inherently all this serves to do is just delay me by about one second? It doesn't really contribute to anything, and I feel like that's... There's little symptoms of that. So this being used for secrets? And little optional areas and stuff like that, or certain puzzles, that's fine. But that's not a puzzle, see, that's just a minor annoyance. So for a scripted story section, that probably shouldn't have been there. Save. I don't think it's gonna be a boss or anything, but you know. Yak is coming. Yeah, I already forgot that one. Now, if it didn't, I would have been, would have been insane. Weird. I better not find a weapon in one of these that I just bought. <laughs> Get the treasure chest by clipping through the walls. The old fashioned way. That's a very angry enemy. Take it, you want me to fight you. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother fighting that enemy, let's just go. Hey, is there any loot here? It seems like there sure is, as soon as I get rid of this... ...enemy. Ooh, a collectible... ...pog. Ah. Loot. 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 Oh, All right, nice bike coming. I actually was about to buy one of those. Hey, I see you following me. Hey, yeah, uh, no, uh huh. Fifty whole dollar dudes. Enemy's gonna catch me. I can graze the bullet. Use the cat. <laughs> Yes. 
Oh god, I'm gonna die. So the game over is not that very punishing. Those ones are kind of tricky. Looks like we're going to some personification of her house. For we lend credence to my theory that we ourselves are a sole survivor, as they put it. This was the turning point for my journey. Everything came down to this night in the end. What I would do next, you know? I didn't have to follow the entity here, but I'm glad I did. I couldn't imagine life if I hadn't. But maybe there wouldn't be life if I hadn't. What do you want me to do with this? Our entire life is a record. A laser disc. I knew disc. what the entity wanted. It wanted me to play the record. To drop the needle. To broadcast the lush and soaring tunes of this masterful LP for the world to hear. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I didn't know that exactly, but I had my suspicions. There's nothing here. It's empty. Because you have to write it. Hey, not my fault. Do you know where it is? Does it have to be this record? What about one of the others? <laughs> you There's can your answer. talk. Okay, fair enough. What do you want me to do? Oh, great. Now you're mute. Look, I'll swing into town in the morning and see if they have this record, this mystical Ultima LP legend or whatever. So you just followed the entity to a radio tower a few miles from town? What is wrong with you? Yeah, Alex, what is wrong with you? Hey, Listen to the talking panda personification. The same. It's like morbid curiosity and whatnot. I wanted to see what it wanted, why it's been living with us. I had just thought your panda friend was getting to be a bit juvenile, so you picked up something more sinister looking. Har har. So, I'm gonna go knock on Michael's door and swing to town, see if I can find this mystical Ultima LP legend. I think that's a good idea. Think anyone really wants to talk to you after that stunt you pulled? No. Hey, easy. Why are you always trying to make me feel bad? Because you are bad. Anyway, I'll pay him a visit. You'll see. No one's mad at me. They've just been busy. They absolutely hate you. If Facebook and MySpace existed in this timeline, they would have defriended you. They most likely said something mean on Twitter that didn't accomplish anything but just bitter feelings. And then they would have gotten a bunch of likes because, you know, life is shallow like that. Mmm, psychoanalysis in the middle of an LP. Why are there things in my yard? Wait. Aries? She went too soon. 
Go by one who loves her dearly. Is this supposed to celebrate the death of Final Fantasy VII in the modern psyche? It disappeared. Ooh. I guess there is events around town. Alex, do you not react to this? Michael! Michael, I'm sorry! Hi! What do you want? I'm gonna say Michael. Oh! Is... Michael home? Michael doesn't talk to losers. Wah! There is no Michael lives here. Only... Oh! You must want the house next door. Yeah, Michael lives there. Oh, sorry. Whoops. That was weird. I've known Michael forever, and I swear to God, he always lived in that house. I needed to relax. I was letting all the paranormal get to me. Is there anything else weird around here, aside from, you know, the Ares reference? Hmm. Like I said, off to college soon. What you? You have any unique dialogue? No. Yes. Can I help you? Is Michael home? Uh, yeah, but he's sick. Does I want to talk to you, Alex? You rang the doorbell. Right. Okay. Cool. Nothing to worry about, see? Stupid panda. He's just sick. Probably. Everyone hates you. You're total dicks. And I'm a stuffed panda. I have no soul. Believe it, I can see it. You should be ashamed of yourself. I was totally uncalled for the other day. Hey man, I'm looking for this record. You've probably never heard of it, but it's called Mystical Ultima LP Legend. You should never say the word you've probably never heard of it while holding your glasses like that. Nah man, I'm super into obscure music. I make all the choices here for the indie music. Uh, let me check. Nah, we don't have it. It's like, yeah, I, th I think it's like sold out, dude. Damn, okay. Anyway, can you order it? Uh, the manager has to do that. But don't you pick the indie music here? You literally just said that. Hey man, lay off. Look, if you want something good, you can check out the Windtown Music Shop. They have a big selection, and they're usually down with the hip cat bands, you dig? Huh? Hip, hip cat? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. No what to the 80s? Wayne's World! Excellent! No, but they didn't say hip cat in Wayne's World. Crap. I was gonna have to go all the way to Windtown to find this thing. I don't wanna go alone. I wondered if Velop was at the arcade. She hates you! Rightfully so. You better have a good excuse. It better be supernatural or something stupid. Like, oh, sorry, I was possessed by an evil ghost. Like, oh, okay. This ghost even told me to go hey, to Bob, college and, you know, waste busy. my degree. Hey, what do you want? So, it's a bit complicated. Uh, can you get away from work for a bit? It's like... It's about Sammy and the entities and all that stuff. How long do I need to be away for? But not long. Just need to run to Windtown. So like three to four hours tops. Are you serious? You you want me to just walk away from my job for three to four hours? 
It's, it's important. Uh, look, no one here really needs you to do your job. It'll be fine. Watch her get fired and she hates Alex even more. <laughs> I need the money, Alex. Hey, I'll pay you. What do you make an hour? Like minimum wage? I'll give you the 30 bucks. Alex, you don't get it, do you? You have no idea what hard work is. You don't get having a purpose besides your own stupid whims. Do you get how hard it is to go from trying to save the world one afternoon to spending your every waking moment working at a friggin' arcade? One second, you're banishing entities and exploring conspiracies, then BAM! You're stuck in a freaking New Jersey arcade making sure no mall rats are loitering. Sure, it got my DDR game to be amazing, but I'm used to honing my skills to something with more of a purpose. One day, Alex, when you finally get a job, You'll understand how everything can't be conspiracies and missing mysterious girls all the time! Okay. Yeah, I get it. Wait, Alex. I I'm sorry, I shouldn't have snapped like that. No, you should've. No, I get it. That's how you feel about me. Good. Nothing I can do to change it. Alex, calm down. No, it's fine! I'm everyone's punching bag! Yes. It's totally great, just keep ticking me. Yeah, feels good. Get over yourself, Alex. Could you be any more of an entitled little brat? Last night, an entity was in my house. I followed it to an old radio tower, and there I found this. What the hell? Yeah, the entity was in my house. No, not that. I don't care about that. Yeah, no one cares about you, Alex. That happens all the time. This, this has to be a joke. Are you screwing with me? Where did you get that? I told you it was in the radio tower. But how did it get here? What? I... Look, do us all a favor and don't try to find that record. Just let it go. But don't you think that this is all connected? Sammy vanishing, me meeting you, Rory, the entity appearing in my house. Sometimes a record is just a record and an entity just lives in your house. Don't try and connect everything together like there is some giant cosmic plan. Look, don't look for that record. Oh, I'm going to. You really can't stop me. Alex! Oh, sometimes you just make me want to... I... I feel like she knew everyone. Maybe she came from, like, the other universe. If you find it, just leave me out of it. I want nothing to do with it. What? Do you, like, really, really hate this band or something? The band is us. <sighs> Alex, just get the hell out of here. I don't want to see you for a while. Sorry. Didn't mean to upset you. We were part of a band. We were hip and cool. Like this current universe where we're just kind of like uncool and unhip. Oh, Michael, dude, glad to see you're feeling better. I'm not glad to see you, Alex. What do you mean? Your mom said you'd been under the weather when I stopped by this morning. Oh, yeah. <coughs> what are you up to? Oh. I told Michael what had happened. Thankfully, he seemed to believe me. Okay, so let's hit up Windtown. While we're there, why don't we stop in and check on Rory? Make sure he doesn't hate you... our guts. It means your guts. I almost got defensive. I almost pointed out how Rory endangered our lives with his stupid attention-seeking lie. But I let it go. Shut up, Alex. He's no like you. Okay, so where to first? Wanna hit up the record place and if we have time, go see Rory? Uh, I think we should see Rory first, since that's more important. Jeez, dude. Dang, Alex. Dang. Dang.
We're just gonna go there and Alex is just gonna say something stupid that's just gonna make things worse. Worry, sorry, I was insensitive that your sister committed suicide. Hmm, Rory isn't answering. Maybe we should check the front door. This is the front door. Oh, hi. Are you Rory's friends? Is this why we didn't want you to see your mom? He doesn't get a lot of visitors. Why don't you come inside? Oh, you guys. Mom, I'm gonna take them downstairs. Come on. You sure you don't want to come in and have something to eat? Leave them alone, Mom. Wow, Rory. Your mom is all legs. Shut up. She's literally legs. Is that a gag? How did that make sense? Shut up. Is this Looney Tunes? What do you guys want? Find out any more information on Semi? Alex has something he wants to say to you. Yeah, come on, Alex. Look, man, I was out of line the other day. I was scared. I don't know what came over me. So, I'm hoping you can forgive me and can be friends. I, I think you're a cool guy, so, yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's okay. I overreacted. No, you did also, I was wrong to lie to you guys. You had a valid point. So, we're trying to track down this record. You want to come with us? Yeah, sure. That was a weird gag. Is, is Rory's mom Lily just a leg? Is, like, is that just makes sense in this world? Is there going to be some kind of plot point that the world Alex comes from is like normal and this is just a weird world? Assuming that my theory is correct anyway, but you know, that's just a theory. A manly theory. It's the best theories, by the way. Why do the record owners keep changing? Hey, we're looking for this record. It's called Mystical Ultima LP Legend. I've got the record jacket, but not the record. Any idea if it's in stock? Mystical Ultima LP Legend. That has to be by far one of the greatest records ever recorded. It's otherworldly. So you've heard of it? Nah, man. It's out there. In the ether. That sounds like it's from a different world. Just by the name alone, I can tell it's amazing. <sighs> Any idea where we can get it? Can't you, like, order us a copy or something? Let me check the record catalog. Does it have to be on vinyl? I don't really care. I suppose I'd prefer it to be. More of an authentic sound, you know? Yeah, but only if you're playing from a tube amp. You have a tube amp, right? If you don't, it's like you're only hearing half the song! Dude, you get it! Right on, let me thumb through the catalog. Give me a second. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, we don't have it in our catalog, but we have two sister stores that probably will. They're both east of here. If, if they don't have it, I know they'll at least know where to get it. A quest for great music is always a worthy one, man. I think you'll find this is worth it in the end. Hmm, okay, yeah. We'll check it out. So, they're both east of here. Any specific directions? There's a strip mall east of here. That's the closest one. The one after that is northeast a bit. It's a standalone building. It's our flagship store, so I doubt you'll miss it. Good luck, guys! Why are you voice so squeaky? Oh my god! So, you guys want to hit up the other two stores? Got nothing else to do in our lives. Yeah, I guess. Sounds like it could be fun. Yes, I am down. Let's do this! Why did you look like you're talking to the sky? Easy there, tiger. Praising the sun while you're around here, huh? Yeah, like Rory has a skill. So it's like, give up rest of HP to revive a fallen member or something like that. So like... That doesn't sound useful. We have items that could revive people, why do I want to sacrifice a party member to do it?
So, Rory, tell us more about you. I don't think we know all that much. Hi, I'm Rory. I'm a scene kid with a dead sister. Dang, Rory, come on now. Uh, that's it. Wow. Dark, dude. Do you, like, have a job or any hobbies? Yeah, I work at this shitty video store, Planet VHS. We can get you any movie 6 to 12 months after its continental US release on VHS. So basically, we suck. Any plans for college or anything? I don't really know if college is in the cards for me. Dang, we're just a group of awkward people, aren't we? Michael, get out of here. You're Why normal. do you say that? Just hope for you. Well, after my sister died, my parents aren't really themselves. They've had a rocky relationship as it is. So I think if I left, everything would fall apart. But that's not your job. You don't have to keep your parents together. I don't know if that's true. I feel like I have a responsibility to them. Hmm. Do either of you have jobs? I used to deliver papers, but nothing lately. Now my dad pays me to proofread the things he writes. Oh yeah, and Alex is unemployed. I might be able to get you a job at Planet VHS. Great, we can just be a... Yeah, a couple of clerks. Oh, yeah, no, I'm... I'm good. I'm just holding out for the right job. I'm not really in a rush. Didn't you tell me on the way that your mom lost her job and you needed to help her out? Again, Alex does really kind of act like Dante, doesn't he? I think she was just saying that. But I know she wouldn't want to push me into anything I'm not ready for. Did you go to college? Yeah, I graduated earlier this year. I have my BLA. Oh, so let me know if you do want that job at Planet BHS. My manager has his BLA, and the night shift manager has his DMA and dance. <laughs> I'll find something. I just need to hold out a bit longer till it feels right. When I moved from Frankton to Jet Set City to start college, I spent the whole bus ride mentally reviewing my 19 years and realizing that almost everything that had happened to me was pretty embarrassing. I'm not exaggerating. I, I didn't want to remember any of it. It was so pathetic. The more I thought about my life up to then, the more I hated myself. It wasn't that I hadn't been happy or hadn't enjoyed my high school experience. I can recall a handful of really great times, but if you added them up, shameful, painful memories far outnumbered the others. When I thought of how I'd been living, how I'd been approaching life, it was all so trite, so miserably pointless. When I made it to college, I knew this was a time for reinvention. All I needed to do was imagine the Alex I wanted to be and work towards him. Forget the old Alex and be someone worth being. Now that I'm here, floating with you, I don't know if I was approaching life right. Did any of it really matter? Who are you talking to? So anyway, I got to college. Made friends with people I never thought I'd hang out with. Got interested in poetry. Started listening to Dylan. I bought a guitar, never really learned. I got interested in novels and music. I was in with the hip crowd. But being hip doesn't mean you have direction. That isn't to say some of the kids I met weren't going places and I hear many of them did, just not me. I was too selfish, too unoriginal, too much of a parasite feeding off everyone's cool. So... Yeah, this is a long trip, just uh, going to a mall. Michael, are you going to college? Yeah, I am. You don't sound so excited. It's just scary. Not the leaving home part, I don't care about that. But you have four years to ensure that you have a future. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it? When my parents were kids, you didn't have to go to college. I bet in 10 years, you'll need your masters to even be considered for a job. I'm also scared of the debt, you know. Did your parents set up a college fund? Nah, they didn't really have that kind of money. Alex. They did good for a while, but my dad's work hasn't been going so well. Do you know what you want to go for? 
My mom said that when she was a kid, mind you, I don't know if women were allowed in college back then, you just went for whatever you wanted, and the degree meant you were educated and had the qualities of a working professional. But now, pick a major, get good at it, stick to it, and maybe you'll get a job. It's 1999, and the economy is terrible compared to my parents' day. Imagine what it'll be like for our kids' kids if we don't get our shit together. Yeah, it's scary, but you need to face that reality eventually. What are you leaning towards? Computers, probably. Maybe I'll make computer games. I can't imagine they'll have a major for it. But I'm good at math, and I hear making games is all math. Hey, when Japanese developers make games, do they program in Japanese? Huh. I have no idea. I wonder if they have to translate programming language. They don't. All programming is done in English, unless you're working in pure binary. Then you just have ones and zeros. How do you know this? Oh yeah, I've tried making games before. I used Objective-C. It's pretty fun. Not great at making graphics, but I'm getting there. That's awesome! You'll have to show us something sometime. Yeah, maybe. Most of them suck, but I'm getting better at it. What, do you like, learn from a book? Yeah, I got this 5,000 page book on game programming. It came with a CD. Every day I try and do some of the example. I want to get to the point where I don't need to check the book if I want to add features. We talked for another 20 minutes before getting on the bus to the strip mall. Oh, I think that's the strip mall up there. Let's go get something to eat at Burger Joint before hitting up the record store. You just got yourself a pawn shop here, I see. Ooh, a record store. Ooh, toys and sports. Hey, there's Planet VHS. I remember sitting at the burger joint wondering why it wasn't more like Michael or Rory. Michael, concerned about the future. Rory, someone who had something to aspire to. At the time, I told myself I had a purpose. I was looking for Semi Park. I was going to find her, save her, I don't know. Something was going to happen. Somehow there would be meaning in all this craziness. So, how about that economy? Yep. Yeah. Really seems like the world is going to shit, doesn't it? First Alex loses Sammy, I lose Carrie, the economy is tanking. Future looks bleak in 1999, boys. Must be Y2K. What's Y2K? It's a tell this game. It's some computer virus or something that's going to destroy modern society at midnight on New Year's. It's also going to exactly. inspire a lot of Computers parodies. only count the last two digits of a number, so they don't know the difference between 2000 or 1900. This will cause various problems with dates and finances and will probably cause a big mess. People all over the world are panicking. When 2000 rolls around, all the computers will crash and nuclear bombs will go off or something. Is this real? Like, is this really going to happen? Probably. I don't know. I think I'd kind of like to see it happen. Definitely would shake things up. What is wrong with you guys? That would cause serious problems! This is crazy. How have I never heard of this before? Probably because you live under a posh little rock and only hear about the things your mommy wants you to hear about. Dang. Little dumb truths. Screw you, man. Maybe that's why everything is going to shit. Maybe the world will end in the year 2000. We'll all die, and our souls will float up into the soul space. Could you imagine? I could, but I didn't like it. Do you really think Y2K could have something to do with Sammy's disappearance? No, I mean, that's a computer problem, right? But then again, the world does feel like it's falling apart. All that war and whatnot overseas. What wars? Oh, there are a few, like the insurgency in Agadin, Nepalese Civil War, Republic of the Congo Civil War, Kosovo War, Eritrean Ethiopian War, Sierra Leone Civil War, Sierra Leone and the Leone war for our minds fought every day in the newspapers. I had no idea there were so many wars happening. What are they fighting over? 
probably over the right to have more wars. Isn't that what war is usually about? War for war's sake? So uninformed. Jeez, I, I used to read the newspaper in college, but I only read this honest in 1999. Okay, enough of this depressing chatter. Uh, shall we proceed to the record shop? Shall we shall? Let us shall. Is Alex just really posh and ignorant? Or is he from a different dimension? Hey man, do you have this record? It's called Mystical Ultima LP Legend. Did you check the racks? What we have is what we have. Oh, yeah, I, I did. Can you look in your computer or something? Fine. G give me a minute. Bangs aimlessly on the keyboard. No, we don't have it. Or do you guys all look the same? We have another store nearby. They'll probably have it. They, they have more of a selection. <sighs> okay, thanks. If you wait for the bus outside, the first stop is our flagship store. Only a 15 minute ride. Would I, would I go wait over here a minute? So, how's this, how you guys doing? It's we been a uh, long trip, like real life. There was something fun about a little quest for this record. Far from my mind were the things that brought me here. Sammy's disappearance, the entities, Bella. Well, she was probably still mad at me, fuming away at her arcade, taking out her anger at me on unsuspecting tweens. I wondered why she didn't want us to find the record. I wondered if she had some bad memories associated with it, or if there was something about entities that I didn't know yet. My mind turned to Y2K. Could the world really end this year? You asked me six months ago. I'd have laughed at you, but now that I've seen so much strangeness, I could honestly say that stranger things have happened. Are we in Costa del Sol or something? The layout looks kind of oddly familiar. Sports. We're in a state. Oh, we're in some kind of weird video game world. Okay, so here's the other NPC. Did you transfer something? Hey man, uh, I'm looking for this record. You've probably never heard of it. Stop saying that with those glasses. It's called Mystical Ultima LP Legend. I have the jacket, but I'm missing the record. Do, do you come from the internet? Are you from Onism 1999? My shirt. What? Yeah, I mean, I go on there, but how did you know? I'm digging that shirt. I'm guessing it wasn't you who posted that, was it? Haven't you checked the forums today? Somebody posted a photo of this record jacket, and they've been asking people if they have a copy. They said it had something to do with Semi Park's disappearance. How do you know about Semi? <laughs> I go on the forum too, obviously. Yeah, I've been following Semi's story for a while. Oh, I think this is another party member. I remember if he saw like the little brief glimpse at that record. But aren't you the guy who posted the photos of her last known location? I am, but... It's just, I had no idea anyone around here even knew about Semi. Please join our party and give me some more damage. I need to bench Rory forever. Hmm. Nice to meet you, man. I'm Claudia. I'm Alex. This is Michael. He's the one who took the photos. And this guy here is Rory. He also lurks on autism. Hi, great. Uh, so you're looking for mystical LP, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, we don't got it. <sighs> but I do know where you can get it. It's gonna sound a bit odd. Hell, you know what? I'll come with you. I own this stupid place. I can take a break whenever I want. Yeah, we're down. Where do we go? There's this old guy. He's on a mountain south of here. He's a oh real chill God. guy. A bit out there, but he's got the biggest record collection on the East Coast. He's bound to have it. Let me, let me just grab my sister. Hey, Chandra! Come here a minute! Two new possible party members? What's up, Claudio? Bench Michael, run too? For a bit. Do you want to come with us? Yeah, hold on. Let me get James to watch the front. So, how do we get there? It's a bit of a hike, but it's a nice walk. Head to the mountain south of here. He has a little cottage on top. Can't miss it. Seems that way. Yeah. Do we actually bench people? Like, is there a captain party? Because everyone's here. Like, who do we decide who, like, gets the front of the lineup? Cardio. Of course you'd use a bulkhead. That shirt like that. Spread item. Spread the effects of a single item across the entire party. Devil's Stance. Do heavy damage with basic attack to target. At the cost of HP, PP, and a member- And a member of the party? Or do you mean like... HP and PP from a member of the party? Bushido. Move fast, unleash hidden skills. I'm assuming you're gonna be like... One of those characters. Like the ones in Final Fantasy, uh... We know it as Final Fantasy Fury, but I'm thinking of certain characters in that. Okay, then there's something here I can use. Maybe Sports has got some new weapons for you guys. Sports! So we're gonna leave the town for this so-called mountain. Is the layout the place? So, it's on Burger Place over there. Mountain Town. Welcome to Mountain Town. We're a mountain town. That makes sense. This is weird. I am sorry. I did not know you were here. You could have knocked. I was in the back room, in the stacks. As you can see, no one visits here. No one except the dungeon master. And uh, he hasn't visited in almost a year. This is very confusing, Bird. Excuse me, but perhaps you have mistaken this for another floor? This is the library. I can't imagine you're here to read all these old books. Only the Dungeon Master is allowed to read them anyway. You're... not the Dungeon Master, are you? No, didn't think so. Forgive me, I hate to be rude, but I'll need you to remove your glasses. There are things in this room that aren't meant for your eyes. Only the Dungeon Master is allowed to see. You understand, right? Good. Anyway, why have you come? What can I do for you? I don't know, I just reached oh, level 15. Oh, Crow told you to visit me? Oh, <laughs> well, it's nice to have the company. Usually Crow sends people away. That's his job, you know. Outsiders aren't allowed in the Dungeon of the Mind. What? Someone gave you the phone number for the Dungeon of the Mind? I don't know what that means. Have I met you somewhere before? As you may know, in this Dungeon of the Mind, memory is unreliable and uncertain. There are things we can remember, and things we cannot remember. You seem to be among the things I cannot. Please forgive me, but... I want to have met you before. 
Of course, what I want doesn't matter. Only what the Dungeon Master wants matters. Okay, I've spoken enough. That made no sense? I guess it was connected to the opening. What am I going to think of? Ghostbusters here. I used to say anime con no comic convention rather. Ghostbusters would be at a comic convention. What are all these people doing here? Usually it's so quiet here. Any ideas, Claudio? Well, there may or may not have been a post and only some about a ghost signing nearby. Oh yeah. I saw that. Some people said the ghost of Sammy Park was haunting the cave nearby. Sammy! I really doubt it's her. One of the commoners on the post said it was his sister. It was hunting a cassette tape or something. Personally, if you want the details, I just test only some. We need to check it out. If it's the same, I need to know. <sighs> okay, let's take a look. We don't have to go for the cave we want to see Mark anyway, so that's on the way. Awesome. We can go two birds with one stone. Let's go. What are you guys up to? No parking anytime. Symbolic for America. That's bad parking. What's with all these weird camera angles in this place? I'm assuming this is where we gotta go. Yeah. Anything in these? Nope. Deep dish pizza. Hello, weird person. Well, I could get across this bridge and we will find the ghost. Go, 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 go! Um, should I run across the poison? Let me see this sign. Avoid, yeah, no. If walking through is unavoidable, make sure to heal your party. So, are you implying that it's unavoidable for me to walk through that stuff right now because it kind of seems like that. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. No, oh, whatever. Here we go. Ow. 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 <laughs> Dungeon key. So I had to go down here. Ow. Ow. Okay. Go. 
Just using open the chest did damage to me. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Is, are these puzzles or is this just loot? I guess there's poison or something. But I can just use the cat to gam, right? So this is kind of like an example of something here where I say like... It's not particularly good level design. Because it's not inherently a puzzle, it's just a time eater. The other one had some vagueness of a puzzle. This one's literally just a time eater. Buy some of that crack. Coca Cola, that is. Let's take a break here. So, how did you get interested in the disappearance of Sammy Park? Can we not get into that now? I'm sick of hearing about that poor girl. Easy, Chandra. I've been interested in missing people for a while. The idea of people vanishing is something that hits close to home, you know? So, I started going in chat rooms for people with missing kids, and someone on there was talking about Sammy Park. I followed the link, and it brought me to the Onism 1999 post. The one with the I kept going back each day and keeping up with what you guys posted. That's a little dark, isn't it? Going on chat rooms for parents of missing kids? Oh, no, I don't, like, get off on it or anything. My little brother went missing when we were young. So all the main characters have like someone that went missing? I guess I still wonder if he's out there. Okay, let's go see the wizard. I don't want to hear any more about missing kids. It really drains me. Hey, Claudio, wait up. So you're into shoujo anime? That's cool. Yeah, that's Those cool. I'm brave enough to walk around in a shirt like that. Yeah, at least not to like the late 2000s. Also, you do know that's a girl shirt, right? Girl shirt? Oh man, that's messed up. This is no more a girl shirt than Maho Shoujo Haru no Shimai is a girl's anime! That's true. One of the biggest demographics is actually men. This show represents everything that is good about life! Oh, well, I've never seen it. I just, uh, assumed it was a girl's anime with all the exploding flowers, pink, and Sailor Moon ripoff characters. You both lose a stop arguing, let's go. Oh. Uh. Oh, you see, man, that's, that's where you're wrong. Maho Shoujo Haru no Shimai is the quintessential human anime. Without this series, the art form would have never progressed. You see, while the anime premiered in 1985 in the US, there were already episodes of this magical series in production in Japan in 1977. Without this series, it's unlikely that Naoko Takauchi would have written Sailor Moon. <laughs> This series was revolutionary for its time, and set the animation and writing standards for everything since. You see, each of the sisters' relationships with Father Seasons is different. Each one relates to him in a different way, as they struggle with being a season witch and being part human. If Father Spring had never laid with a human woman, the world would have been destroyed time and time again with his evil daughters, the Winter Sisters. It's the balance of humanity that allows them to control the powers. And don't even get me started with the soundtrack. Oh, the amazing blend of mm, funk, jazz, and Japanese pop blows my mind every- Oh, oh, oh! There's an episode, season 16, episode 309, called Run Run Harunatsu, in which the Spring Sisters have to experience their powers as if they have been purely seasoned witches. This proves to me that- Dude, this sounds like literally the most generic piece of crap ever. Just forget it. Enjoy your shitty girl anime. Don't involve me. Look, I am just as into Japanese crap as the next guy, but what you have borders on an obsession. Why is Rory the one, like, telling people off? What is wrong with this world? It don't make sense. None of it makes sense.
No way! You gotta repeat this and walk for the poison each time? Oh no. That's not fun. That's just tedious. That's what I'm saying, the puzzle design is atrocious, I'll, I'll say that. Um, this is comes like another example of... There's no point. There's, there's no intelligence to this, there's no cool trick you think, oh, I'm smart. It's just inherently... They put poison there just to rub it in. It's, it's a, it's a life sink. Both in a figurative sense and a literal sense. Now I gotta f dangle the cat. Maybe go north a little more. Cat controls are not very friendly on the keyboard. Analog stick, you probably can get those kind of gradual turns. So now I gotta go back for the poison again. I haven't bothered healing, because, you know, why not? And then I gotta go for the ladder loading screens again. To finally... get to the right hole. Yeah, everyone's dying. <laughs> everyone's dead! This was all just to get the dungeon key, so I can proceed with the, the dungeon. Okay. Yes, I would like to use the dungeon key. I don't know if there's anything else I can use it on, but you know, the dungeon doors. Oh god, we're doing a satanic ritual to summon the 80s. Aren't you from the beginning? You got more anime since then. Oh shit. I didn't expect this. You're seeing that the voice acting is not here. Is that her? Is that Sammy Park? No, no, it's not. For a moment, I felt relief, happy it wasn't Sammy. But then I found out the spirit of the ghost woman in front of me. I realized that there was someone out there missing her. Just as much as I was missing Sammy. Someone out there lost this girl. She was someone's daughter, or sister, or friend. I felt selfish with the relief, but can you blame me? Guys, do you think she's dangerous? She's a ghost. How much harm can she really do? So what do we do now that we found her? I think we should talk to her. See why she's here. Why is it only like us here? Like where's the rest of the party at? There might not be a boss fight, because I didn't heal. Boombox Spectre. You would hardly recognize me, I'm so glad. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. This is Rory and Claudio. Are you okay? Backbeat, the word was on the street. No, I guess you're dead. Can't be that okay. Why are you here? Shad, I feel stupid. Guys, what the hell am I supposed to say to a freaking ghost? You're doing fine. Just keep talking. You'll make a connection. I hope. Why are you here? In this cave. Doing cave stuff. Why aren't you moving on? Is that a thing, guys? Do, do ghosts move on? I honestly feel like I'm just quoting movies at this point. This maybe they're gonna be the one that saves me. I think they're talking. Are you hunting that boombox? Guys, I think she's hiding in the boombox. You're my... Supposed to be my wonder wall. 
who's supposed to be my boyfriend. I made you this mixtape. I made and gave you everything. You forgot about our date. I ran across the street when I saw you. I was so excited to throw my arms around you. And what did you do when you heard me shout your name? You turned away and you put your arm around her. What did she have that I didn't have? Stupid mixtape. I was never good at talking. I can't say things like you can say things. So I thought. But maybe these stupid songs would make you know how I felt. But you didn't want for me. You were so cruel. You'd even stop when the car brakes screeched and my body hit the asphalt. When the red from my head poured into the ground, everyone screamed. I was invisible to you. I was dead. Damn you, Shane G. Irving. Damn, Shane. This mixtape was for you. Wherever you are. I know if you could just hear it. It's a death mark prequel, by the way. I could be at peace. I'd be able to feel the pain you caused me. Feel how much I loved you. Okay. Damn. Poor girl. I wonder how long she'd been haunting this cassette. I wonder what we should do with it. The way I see it, we have two options. We can give it to that Shane G. Irving guy, or we could turn it to our brother who posted on Onizim. I don't really know what's right. On one hand, our brother really wants his sister's cassette back. On the other, what if we gave Shane G. Irving the cassette? She just haunts him for all eternity. Well, that revenge doesn't bring her peace. Good point. I don't know what's right or wrong in this situation. We'll find out with a safe point, won't we? I'll personally leave that decision up to you, since you were the one to get the story out of her. I'll need to think on it. Okay, well, at least we know it wasn't Sammy. As you see this was, we're no closer today than we were yesterday. Yeah. Well, let's document this on Onisim and go from there. Hey, Alex. I'm happy it wasn't Sammy. I think she's still out there. Thanks, Claudio. That was a weird cutscene. Just because it was, like I said, not voice acted. It was fairly lengthy. And only certain NPCs with, well, party members were there. That looks like some loot over there. That's a hundred dollar dues. Now buy me a couple slices of pizza. It's supposed to be like Pokemon, isn't it? <laughs> I just realized the layout. He's got like the rocks. Pokemon like had like rocks to make like kind of like fence walls because you know they want to render fences sometimes. And then drop down to a place. It's a secret loot behind the cabin. Or is it just a place behind the cabin? It's just a place behind. Hey man, it's great to see you! How you been? Hey guys. Wow, did you get even more muscular, Claudio? And Chandra, did you get even more beautiful? Claudio's gotta be strong for all them anime girls. <laughs> Always changing for the better, you two. I brought my friends, Alex, Michael, and Rory with me. They wanted to check out your record collection and see if you could help them locate an album. Friends of Claudio and Chandra are always friends of mine. Please, have a seat. I'll make some tea. So my new friends here wanted to talk about some elusive record they can't seem to track down. We've been looking for it for a while. We've been to literally like 10 record shops. Claudio says you've got quite the collection. I do indeed. So what sort of music interests young people these days? 
hair metal, power metal, speed metal, metallic metal, pop punk thrash metal. Vaporwave. Uh, I mean, I'm not really into metal. I mean, it's cool. That's more of Vela's thing, I think, with the eyeliner and choker. Who is this enchanting young woman? Uh, is she here as well? No, she isn't here. She threw a hissy fit when she found out we were looking for this record. Hissy fit? Do people even say that? Yes, they do. I don't believe they do. So what sort of music are you into, Alex? Oh, usually down-tempo stuff with trumpets, acoustic guitars, bells, toy pianos, and female vocalists singing sexually ambiguous lyrics. Ah, uh, I don't think I have anything like that. Uh, perhaps you noticed my collection of guitars? Yeah, I, uh, I think I saw it on the way in. Do you play? I do. Mark here made his fortune playing music. Well, before he became a world traveler. Mark sponsored the Bring Him Home concert for my cousin who fought in the Gulf War. That was long before you could even walk. Hell, I was a kid then. The power of metal unites all. You see, heavy metal is the oral manifestation of all things good and powerful in the world. It contains the perfect positive energies to dispel hate, racism, sexism, poverty. With the power of the metal gods channeling through my guitar strings, I was able to bring peace and prosperity to the Middle East. <sighs> well, he got our cousin home. Yeah, I did. Okay, I got ahead of myself. I brought peace to one family whose son had been taken captive. It's a harrowing tale filled with adventure and intrigue. Yeah, I don't know if we really have time for that. And besides, like I said, I'm not really all that into metal. With all the bad fashions and teased hair, it's also 80s. Dang, Alex. Dang. This is the 90s. We're moving forward. Our music is about things. Dang, Alex. Dang. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend that you don't mean to imply that heavy metal can't be about things. Clearly, you've never heard the soaring scream of the guitar paired in perfect counterpoint to an orchestra, accompanied by the sound of a trillion angels. You, my dear boy, must listen to my greatest hit, Murder Run and Melancholia Reigns Unbroken. It's a lot less depressing than it sounds. All of Mark's music is like that. He has albums and albums filled with skeletons and decaying corpses. But somehow he manages to make music that speaks to the soul. Like Scene of Decay, The Stone, Part 9. The first few songs of that album are really beautiful, Alex. Disfigured by Eliga's on High Altar of Honor. That is my personal favorite. I used to hula hoop to it all the time. One of Mark's tracks was featured in some pretty great animes. Dragon of Thy Delusion and Powered by Delirium were featured in my second favorite anime, Panic Control. Yeah, okay, enough about this topic. Can you tell me about this tea we're drinking? I feel like the game is closer. I feel like Earthbound's a really bad comparison. I'm not sure who started that. I feel like it's it's more like a Suda51 RPG. An awkwardly executed one. Which Suda51 games admittedly are, but um, a little bit more awkward than that. This here is something I only bring out when friends are over. It's called Da Hang Pao. It's a world famous tea, exceptionally rare and difficult to come by. The bushes that produce this tea are reportedly over 1,000 years old. <laughs> Make sure you don't spill a drop. This is very special tea. Where did you get this? It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing, right? <sighs> I can't explain to you in detail how all these circumstances are related. It would be a very long and very complicated story. And I mean no disrespect to you when I say this. It would be virtually impossible for you at this stage, young man, to understand. Now, you are, of course, in no way responsible for this, but I'll do my best to explain the circumstances by which I came to possess this rare leaf. In my youth, I was something of a traveler. 
I lived for journeying and discovery. But what about the record? I had a partner, a very good man, who became ill in his mid-thirties. At the time, I considered myself to be very worldly. I lived for the dirt under my feet, but I also did not believe in the supernatural in any form. Alas, my partner came down with a severe stomach cancer that began to claim his life. He was a spiritual man, one might say, and he believed in miracles. His faith and his failing body led to the ending of our friendship. He left for India, and I stayed back in Arizona, where I'd built a life for myself in between trips. He was gone for many weeks when I received a letter from him. The letter was scribbled in the handwriting of a dying man. It featured coordinates that, upon further inspection in an atlas, proved to be in the mountains of India. So, I began my journey. After many days of travel, I arrived at the summit of Mount Kangchenjunga. I paid a local village boy to guide me to the location. At the top, I found my friend. My friend, who only a few weeks ago had been on the brink of death, had been cured through the power of water. The water boiled in the particular style of pots created by the Dharabeta yogis is said to have amazing healing powers. Now, when my friend had regained his strength tenfold, I was in shock. I longed to take a sample of this drink back to an American laboratory where it would be tested and ultimately turned into a cure. But I was told that the last bush bearing the tea had burned up in a forest fire. Naturally, I demanded proof. There was no evidence that any such fire ever occurred. Angered, furious, on the point of striking the yogis, my friend had to take me away. Together, we explored the mountainside for the remainder of the week. Now, despite my anger that they would not let me test the tea, everything had been incredibly happy. In India, I've always felt an incredible glow of joy. On our last day, before we were to return, the earth gave out beneath my feet, and I was stuck. Soon a storm came. The storm was so bad, I feared it would wipe away the mountain, and I'd be stuck in a landslide. This is where things became interesting. My friend was able to break away at the rocks, binding my feet with his bare hands. He had expelled the disease from his body and achieved a new strength. I believe I would have died on that mountain had it not been for him. I hold true to the fact that he survived his cancer so he could save me. When we returned, the yogi hermit had left his camp, but he left behind the pot he created to cure my friend's cancer and a container of this tea. Wow, that's a fascinating story, man. Really, this is an amazing cup of tea. Yeah, you know, it's valued at $3,000 an ounce. <coughs> so, what did you kids come for? How can I help you? Some kind of weird astral objective involving a record? I'd tell you more, but I don't think you'd understand it. Oh, my friend Alex here is looking for a record. It's called Mystical Ultima LP Legend. That name? That sounds so familiar. How did you find out about this Mystical LP? I found the jacket. Here, I have it with me. Ah, uh, yes. The Mystical Ultima LP Legend by Vela Wild. Oof. Did you say Vela Wild? How come Alex didn't realize this? He could've just read the album subcase. Uh, yeah. But... Didn't you know this already? It's on the cover. Did you even read it? Dang, Alex. Dang. I... Uh... Dang. Suddenly, everything made sense. Well, at least a little bit of sense. Bella, the guitar, her ability to fight with sound. Clearly, she was the musician, the creator of this record. How stupid I had been. I told her about the record and she must have assumed I read the title closely. Vela Wild. Probably a stage name. Did I say something wrong? 
you uh, kind of stopped talking for a while and looked all deep in thought. I just realized something. Yeah, the mind is like that. You keep many things hidden away, and they come out when they're the most needed. Did you ever consider that this record might be locked away inside your mind? I actually did consider that, as weird as that sounds. And if not yours, maybe inside the mind of this wild character. Considering how this plot is going, I actually did highly consider it. Damn. So you don't have it? No, how could I? It hasn't come out yet. So what are the chances that both Alex and Vela come from the same universe? It, it just all depends on who the, the love interest is, if it's Sammy Park, or if it's Vela. What? Check the date on the back of it. See the sticker? Do not sell until January 1st, 2000. Since I'm not a time traveler, well, at least in this life, I couldn't possibly have this record. You kids should pay closer attention to your record jackets. They have lots of useful information on them. Thanks a lot, Mark. I know where to find this record now. I wouldn't be surprised if all these characters were his friends. Like in whatever universe he originally came from. Maybe just like a little bit different, living in different places. What? You do? How? I'll explain some stuff when we get outside. That's why he got, like, the, the house wrong. Claudio, Chandra, there's some things I want to let you in on, especially since you've been so kind to me since we've met. Okay, a, a lot of this is going to sound out there, and I know that. No, Claudio's the so anime listen nerd. To the sincerity in my voice, and He's not going to doubt it. so much the absurdity of the words I'm going to say. Hey, that sounded pretty deep. Oh, sorry, man. Go on. I'm not entirely sure of what's going on myself, so some of the parts might seem a little hazy. Okay, here it goes. When I arrived home from college earlier this year, I met Sammy Park. Alright, I'm calling it. Alex is the main character, I think it was Cosmo, from Ideon, after the universe got reset. He, he changed his hair, grew a beard, and then he came to this universe. Zidion works in a cycle, see. I'd followed a cat into an old factory. How's that for an obscure reference? She was alive and well. A, a bit odd, but pretty great, to be honest. I tried to help her get out of the building, and some beings known as soul survivors appeared and took her away. You should check out that anime, by the way. It's the inspiration for Ava. I later met a woman named Vela, who told us that the soul survivors are beings from another reality one like our own. She said that these beings have surrendered the right to their physical form in favor of a spiritual one. With this power, they could move within the soul space, which is the space in between realities. Then we met Rory, and Rory had recently lost his sister and encountered a soul survivor himself. Then I found out that one of these beings was living with me. I chased it out of my house and then into a radio tower. At that radio tower, it asked me to play this record, to broadcast it. So that's why I've been looking for it. Okay, that's fair. I didn't expect you to believe me. Rory, you lost your sister? I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, thanks. Losing a sibling is a terrible burden on any person. Let us know if you need anything. Um, yeah, what's going on here? We've lost someone before. We know what it's like. Maybe that's what drew me to the Sammy Park case. I see. Uh, what about the soul survivors and all that? Let's say we've had experience with the supernatural before. I had a kid brother, you know. He went missing in 1985. Got on his bike one day to go to our neighbors. Seven houses up the street. And he just vanished. Never came back. We looked for him for months. Dad never stopped. Still hands out flyers at the grocery store every Sunday. He even got an artist to draw a mage. Were there ever any leads or anything? No one really ever investigated it. Sure, they looked around for him. And for a week, they had a task force. They had one guy they suspected. But every lead fell through. You act like they even tried. 
A four-year-old black kid goes missing in a shit neighborhood, and you think they really tried? Yeah, it's just... It's complicated, Alex. I don't remember this being on the news or anything, and you're from Windtown, right? No. That's like an hour outside of Frankton. How the hell did this get national coverage? Isn't it obvious, man? Same reason no one gives a shit about Semi Sammy Park. I'm sure if Aaron had been a beautiful white woman, everyone would have cared that he vanished. Everyone would have had a candlelight vigil and a moment of silence. But that's just not how these things work. And you know what's funny? My dad is a lawyer, and my mom was an assistant to the governor. It's not like we were shit no one people, you know? It just wasn't news or whatever they told us. Alex, don't you think Sammy's parents tried to get some attention for their daughter's disappearance? It's not that easy. Those people you see on TV are people who can make a great story for the press. That's just the way it works. I... I don't think I ever gave it any thought. I think there's a bit of irony here, because the, the real uh, elevator girl was actually, um, it's actually relatively wildly known, and it was actually a pretty big press thing due to the nature of it. Yeah, man. That's just how they get away with it. People like you don't think about it, and people like us, it's all we ever get to think about, where our kid brothers went. Don't you think it's weird that a young woman goes missing in your town and only people talking about it are some weirdo kids on the internet? And they aren't really talking about it for awareness. You guys get off on it in a way, don't you? Some fantasy about being the white knight swooping in and saving the exotic Korean girl. <laughs> Easy now. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go find this record. <laughs> where, uh, uh where, 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 do, where, do, where do we do that again? You guys are coming along? <laughs> awesome! Uh, back to Frankton. We need to speak to Vela, the girl who made this album. I hate to admit it, but sometimes I just wish we could let him go. My younger brother, you know? Why did they pan out like all the other characters? Did they, did they, get, did they get sucked into Alex so they can like walk with him later? <laughs> Not a day goes by where I don't think about him. And you know what's really funny? I don't even remember what he looks like. We have a few old photos, but most of them he just looks like every other kid to me. Round-faced, happy, playing video games, or falling off a bike. You don't remember anything about him? No, I don't think so. I think I only remember what people tell me about him. And you know what's funny? He was my twin brother. I was a minute older than him. Claudio still gets frustrated with me sometimes. You're his twin, can't you feel him out there? Or don't you have special twin powers that let you know if he's in pain? I don't believe in that stuff. Well, not usually. Sometimes I do. It's in those moments that I really do think he isn't out there anymore. If there was a connection, I'd feel something. And since there is nothing there, he must be gone. Sometimes people just vanish. They are there one moment, and gone the next. Bad Dude, people take gone them, tomorrow. they fall into sewers. But life has to move on. It's harder for my parents, I think, since they made him and whatever. But Claudio? I don't think he'll ever move on. It's all he thinks about. And finding this semi sammy pack girl? This obsession you brought onto him? This shit isn't fair. He had one dead kid to worry about never finding, and now you gave him another. I'm gonna say how that cutscene ended was really awkwardly scripted. So, you have the entire group right here, all around the main character, and they're all talking. And then it pans out, and they're gone, and then Alex is talking to, um, Chandra. And then she ends off with some comment about Claudio. And there's, like, no kind of, like, reaction from Alex. There's, like, no, like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, or, like, there's no, like, retort or anything. It just kind of cuts off. So, so the the powerness, powerfulness of the scene, I, I felt lost in its delivery, sadly, and I, I feel like that's actually a uh, semi-recurring thing. This game, a little bit. where I think the game, like it, it had some, the plot's a little out there and it, it's it's purple prosy, but but I think inherently there is something interesting enough to work with there. 
Um, and, and we could have relatable characters. But the delivery needs a bit more directing, whether it's like the scenes or the editing or whatever. Uh, and, and with that, like I said, the, the concept, it's kind of a little out there spiritually. Um, like I say, it reminds me of a Suda 51 game, which also sometimes dabbles in some Eastern spiritual concepts. But, um, I think we just froze, or it's a cutscene coming up. Wow. <laughs> um. What? No, no, it's a hard lockup. It's a weird one, though. Okay. This, this is a weird lockup. So the menu works, but it's like the game world's locked up. So it's not hard frozen. It's just very specifically frozen? I, I don't know. I think I just have to quit on and watch the cutscenes again. All right, we'll see if we get the same bug. But as I was saying, I, I feel like there, there, there is a plot there and I, I like the idea of what it is. Um, there, there is some strong cases of uh, identity issues. I guess the reason the game bugged it was like the pan from top and down. In the sense that the game is trying to be a little kind of goofy with a lot of references, for example. But the storyline itself is extremely somber. It, it's actually not a, not a funny story. It, it's, you know, it's like abductions and Alex is like insufferable and stuff. And his friends are like, hey Alex, you gotta stop being insufferable. This guy's sister committed suicide. And like, that's all really somber stuff. Like, that's depressing. And I haven't seen an uplifting moment. I haven't seen that, like, a, a moment where characters are chill or anything. They're very awkward and everything like that. So, it's a serious story. But then we also have, like, goofy game references. Um, and it's not so much the goofy game references themselves, but just the overall vibe and atmosphere as a little bit of a disjoint, I'll say. That's how I'll describe it. I think it could have been more of a powerful story, at least since from what I've played so far, if it kind of stuck to the somber guns and things were a little bit less trying to be funny within the atmosphere itself, I'll say that. Because that is, I would separate that from Suda51 in this game. Suda51 games, arguably, a lot of them are pretty terrible. There's a few of them that are pretty damn terrible. I still play them, people still like them. But I think it's because Suda51 is pretty good with melding goofiness with a somber atmosphere. He, he does have that kind of Tarantino style, as they, they describe it with him. He's not really Tarantino, but people always make comparisons, you know what I mean? This game needs to feel its footing, and I feel like some of the footing issues could have been caught uh, early enough in its multi-year development with some uh, outside input. Um, and when I say outside input, I, I basically say it in the sense that I personally believe writers and directors of games and movies are on their own by themselves are probably terrible. It doesn't matter who, how clever they are or how good they are. I feel like on their own, they're probably not that good. They have, like, good ideas and good um, technical skills, but I feel like sometimes they need outside opinions to refine it. It's like when you're, like, writing like or doing art, sometimes you need that outside opinion. Uh, and, and I feel the outside opinion with these games, uh, directors and writers, in a sense, did not uh, execute itself well enough. They didn't. They weren't critical enough to um, make the diamond or the the coal kind of shine into a diamond. That's all I'll say about the plot for now and the, and the kind of pacing and writing. The real critical flaws are in the gameplay. That's that's where I think the game is mostly flawed. You could have pulled the gameplay, made this a walking sim, and it would have been probably received a lot better. I'm also gonna add. I don't think the game feels particularly 90s. Because 90s is kind of like this weird dysmorphism of like. I asked the dirty grunge. Back when I spoke with Bella myself. A major and economic to boom. Apologize alone. And the opposite of grunge with like kind of brightness. And this is. 
This is kind of its own beast. Now, I don't necessarily feel the 90s here. As I walked across the chewing gum and popcorn covered floor, I imagined what the title of my quest would be if my life was a video game. The Quest of Alex! Quickly it was becoming Apology Quest or Legend of Please Forgive Me. I guess that's fine too. I wondered how many other people would have to say I'm sorry too before I found Sammy. If that's even where life was taking me. Lately, Sammy wasn't at the forefront of my thoughts. I wanted to find her, and I really wanted her to be safe. But the more time that passed between meeting her and thinking about her, she became less real. More of a concept, more of a mythical being that only existed in my mind and the mind of the internet. Oh, hey. What's up? I came here to say I'm sorry. In my infinite arrogance and constant thinking of myself, I didn't look at the record properly. I, I had no idea you created it. I had no idea it would upset you. So basically, if you'll still be my friend, I very much like that. Hmm. Okay. I accept. <laughs> okay, great. I, uh, I expected to do more begging. That comes later. Don't push your luck. Just let it go. Who are... Oh, Michael! Rory! New friends? Hey, new friends! <laughs> it was easier than I expected. Now, to convince her about getting the record. Fellow's the best character, by the way. Maybe followed by Claudio. I introduced her to Claudio and Chandra. We went to the burger joint and talked about everything that had happened up to this point. They told her about their brother. Rory talked about his sister. Michael talked about his college fears. And I just listened. I never expected to find such an amazing group of friends so close to home. It was a great feeling. And now came the tricky part. To ask her to go inside of the mind dungeon with me and look for the record. Bella, can I ask you a personal question? I suppose. So, I was wondering if you could tell us about the record. The one you made. What's there to tell? In my previous reality, I made a record. Pretty simple. Why are we all on the cover? Can you tell us why a record jacket from the album you made in another reality that was set to be released next year was found in this reality? I have no idea. You do realize I left that reality behind intentionally, right? There are reasons I wanted to escape. Yeah, no, I get it. Just... I wonder if it's somehow linked to everything going on. I'm telling you, Alex, you're looking for puzzle pieces where there is no puzzle. You're talking like there's some cosmic plan here. There is a cosmic plan. That's literally the whole plot of this game so far. What exactly do you think is going on here? Some kind of cosmic plan? It's just... It's all so weird. Sammy disappearing, me meeting you, then Rory, Chandra, and Claudio, we're all linked. Fine. If it will make you stop sulking, I'll go with you into the mind dungeon. I'd like to know why my record is here myself. I'm a little confused here, guys. How the hell does Alex know the record is in your mind dungeon? Because I know she's trying not to think about it, and the things we try not to think about always end up on our minds. That seems like more of a stretch than the link between Sammy and the record to me, but sure, I've got nothing else to do. Let's get inside Bella's head! Okay, just keep your hands to yourself while we're in there, boys. It's creepy enough letting one person in my mind. Um, how do we do this? In all seriousness, how do, do we do, do we just go to the thing and just like go to the mind dungeon? Here's another thing I'll kind of add to this is my criticism in the game. And there's gonna be a few people out there, because sometimes even when I'm nice to a game, they say, man, he's overly critical, why you want me to watch a critical player? Um, and I, I'm honestly probably the nicest YouTuber when it comes to, like, judging games out there. Trust me, I compare myself. Um, and I'm probably gonna be one of the few ones to give this game a fair shake for trying to judge it on what merits it has. So, I think the game has improved as I, I've played it. I'll, I'll say that. As the cast has fold out, some of the more characters are more enjoyable than the previous ones, and so on. So it has improved, but if you're me playing, and I haven't been like going slow or grinding or anything, I've just been fighting fights as I, I encounter 
it's yeah, I think it's been it's been close to the 10 hour mark now. And when you need when you have a game like this, you do need to get that hook in early. You really need to get the hook in early. So if, if part of the, the appeal is say the chemistry between characters, you want to introduce not necessarily all the characters, but you want to introduce chemistry between characters very early on as part of the hook. So we'll, we'll compare it to say a mainstream main, uh, RPG like Final Fantasy VII, for example, you know, legendary. And then, say, uh, we'll go with Persona 4, not Persona 3. Oh, well, we can use that too, but let's go with Persona 4, because that had more of a town environment. So, Persona 4, you didn't have all the characters up front, but you had enough of the cast. It was just more than two friends or something. You had at least four or five characters. And you did have them kind of already having the chemistry interactions very early, almost from the get-go. So within the first hour, if not less, you are already invested to say these characters are relatable, I like them, so on. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, you had negative chemistry in a sense that Cloud was kind of banting with Barrett in the beginning. But it wasn't like really mean banting, it was kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like ribbing each other. And then the Cloud had a little banner with some of the other terrorists part of the group Avalanche. So within, that was within like five minutes of the beginning of the game. So within the five minutes, you know nothing about the characters, their motivations or anything, but you already have that they have a certain chemistry, and through that chemistry you know where each character kind of stands personality and uh, writing-wise. And that's good directing. When you have to take ten hours or five hours, even two hours to get to that point, that's bad directing. It's not that it's casualized or anything, or one's better than the other, it's just bad directing. Because part of the efficiency of writing and proving that you're a good writer or a good director is that you are able to tear away the fluff and get to the meat of your talent or story that you want to tell. Because you have to always inherently remember games, movies, books, whatever. They're not life simulators unless they specifically are. They are written works. You have to convey a story to someone's imagination directly. Um, and Y2K, the opening hour is actually not terrible. Um, I, I like the surrealness of it and everything, and I think it's more creative than the later dungeons, which are just blasé. But it does not do enough, probably, to like hook you into the Alex character itself, which is, like I said, a, a directorial flaw. The story is a story probably could have used editing down and then rearrangements of certain concepts. That's why whenever you like read about backstories and um, behind-the-scenes stuff with, say, uh, a movie or any famous, you know, critically acclaimed game, you always kind of find out like, oh. This character's relation is completely different than what was originally written, or the storyboard is completely different, or this would occur here, or that would occur here. And some of this has changed sometimes only in like a few months, or a year, you know, before it goes to gold. Because the writers do reanalyze, like, well, this works better here from Ali's perspective, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, I should have gotten a mind mind that didn't level up. Vela. Well, I'm sure there'll be opportunities later. Life has many doors, Eddie boy. Okay, so see, this is interesting. That's much better than generic cave or sewer level. That's what I'm saying, like, the game, there is some charm to the game, like, it's there, it just, it should have cut everything that wasn't charm. This is a Valhalla reference. And this is a, I actually forgot your game, it was like ROM or something. <laughs> I played the entire game. <laughs> 